Good morning, UVC. I think we're live. Um, I am coming to you not from our home grounds, but from my home this morning because in Kansas City, we had quite the snow this weekend and the trees are abundantly saturated with this beautiful white. I'm gonna show you a little picture of it here from Kansas City. Look at that gorgeous snow. Ah, but needless to say that snow has kept us off the roads this morning. So we are still bringing you this live stream Sunday experience. So if this is your <clears throat> first time live streaming with us, we welcome you. I can see we have Julie, we have Trisha, we have a lot of people that usually are in-house with us at Unity Village Chapel. And so we're glad that <clears throat> you're all joining us online. And if you know anyone that doesn't know we're online this morning, you can post this to them. You can even host a watch party. That's a new thing about Facebook. You can um, actually host a, wa a watch party. And then some of our folks who normally go to unityvillagechapel.org and live stream us there are still live streaming us there. So you don't even need to have Facebook in order to live stream with us, but we are streaming to Facebook Live. <coughs> Sorry for the coughing this morning. Just like all of our live streamers usually do, I say grab your coffee or your tea. I have my tea with me this morning because we're all cozied in together. If you would like to make comments back and forth during our time this morning together, feel free to post to them. Just know they're running sideways for me, so I won't be able to see them all. Uh, but feel free to interact, feel free to post this morning, and just uh, make this experience your own. We're thinking of this as just outside of the box, community, spirituality coming together. And so um, it's just a delight to join together this morning for this sacred time and this sacred service. So I invite us to just take a deep breath right where we are, knowing that every moment of this time together is a moment of collective consciousness. There's a quote that I have on our Unity Village Chapel website that talks about, it's from Charles Fillmore and it, or Eric Butterworth, I think, uh, but it talks about what happens in a sanctuary, why it's significant to come into a building together. Um, and I think today that's relevant um, to this, even the aspect of us coming together in the ethers, in, in, on the internet. When we pause at the same time, something magnificent happens. We're holding the same uh, intention and the same thought. We're joining together. And so whether that happens inside of the sanctuary or whether that happens right here, it matters that we do this in real time together. So I invite you just to right where you are in your own space, in your own home, to take a deep breath and just breathe into this moment as we open up this prayer together, as we open up this moment together, knowing that these words and this intention of consciousness and love saturates your very home where you are. So we breathe in this morning knowing that there is one power and one presence. It is pure love. It is pure light. It has no opposite and it has no end. It is absolute and inexhaustible. It is everywhere present. It is within everyone. It is in and through and as everyone in expression. It is from this awareness that we pause on this sacred morning, calling this morning sacred, calling this moment sacred, creating the sacred in this space. So right where we are, we acknowledge all of those who join with us. We are joining together from all around the globe. We just take a moment to feel that, to feel the connection. We take a moment now to feel our collective intention. And now we take a moment to appreciate each other for checking in this morning. Appreciate everyone who is a part of this collective experience for taking the time not out of their lives but in their lives to join together because it makes a difference to all of us when one of us shows up for life in a grounded, mindful way. And 
and so it is. So would you put some love in your hands because we're going to bless our young ones. Let's bless all of the kids that are in our hearts, all of those that are around our world and know that our blessing makes a difference. Our blessing is we love you, we bless you, and we appreciate you just the way you are. So let's know that together. We love you, we bless you, and we appreciate you just the way you are. And so it is. So I would like this morning to share with you the daily word. Some of you might have this online so you can read it with me. But the daily word today from Sunday, January 13th is spiritual family. How perfect is that? Spiritual family. I align with others in a spirit of support and cooperation. That's the affirmation. I align with others in a spirit of support and cooperation. I am a spiritual being. Nothing is missing. Nothing is withheld. I allow my Christ nature to make the choices that lead me through any challenges I may face. I also know that creating or developing a world that works for everyone and a new spiritual consciousness is a collective effort. It relies on a sense of cooperation and understanding that allows my nature to align with others who share my sense of divine purpose. We come together for mutual support at every opportunity, uniting to fulfill the purpose of divine wisdom, love, and life. I am grateful for the love I receive from my spiritual family. I align with others in a spirit of support and cooperation. How perfect is that for this morning? From Ephesians 2, 19 through 20, you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. That tells me that we are of sacred royalty. All of us, every being on the planet is of sacred royalty. And that the part of us that is the apostle and is the prophet is alive and well within us. That's the part of us that has pure guidance, that uh, has knowingness, and the part of us that is wise enough to follow that knowingness, that has a sort of dedication and commitment to the practice and to showing up as a spiritual being and showing up with the highest intentions. So this Sunday, that's what our conversation, our Sunday conversation is about today. It's about those intentions. I, um, I like to keep life simple. I ha Well, and that's actually not true. I'm crazy complicated and kind of a ridiculous person, but I, I like the idea of simple. I have a minister friend, um, Reverend Bobby Enyart, and he always used to say, truth, Aaron, truth is, is uh, simple. It's always simple. It may not be easy, but it's simple. And so if there's anything complicated, if anyone's trying to, you know, give you any complicated version of stuff, it's not truth. Truth is simple. So my truth, uh, since I've been able to put it into words, is that I'm here to do and be what I came here to be and do. So essentially simple whatever my being incarnated for that is what i want to be about and it may sound too simple like there aren't goals in there that there's not a big vision in there but what that does for me what those words do for me is that they remind me to be on purpose they remind me the power of time, you know, about the power of time, that my time really is valuable. And it reminds me to direct myself in ways consciously, to direct myself in ways of expressing, in ways of thinking, in ways of acting consciously, because I, I came here for a reason, or I'm expressing for a reason, or based on whatever your beliefs are, you will create a reason by virtue of your being alive. You will create your purpose by virtue of being alive. So to really try to be intentional about that. And it's the new year. We just had our White Stone service last Sunday. Thank you, Reverend Robin, for leading that service for us. Um, and the White Stone service is about getting a word or uh, a name and having that carry you through this next year. And we also, in the new year, talk a lot about resolutions. Uh, yet, for many of us, we live the same life over and over again, year after year, day after day. So what can make the difference? Uh, 
on the spiritual path, we know that a spiritual practice can definitely make a difference. They say you can't change your personality, you can't change your habits very well, but anyone that has opened up to a spiritual practice of mindfulness uh, knows that you can actually make significant changes with a mindfulness practice and experience a different reality. The same you that you were born with, but a whole different perspective. And in fact, when you really get into the practice, you can have one experience, one moment or one day, one feeling, and it can be all encompassing. And you can really truly think, this is truth, this is my reality. It's unchangeable, something's a mess or something's unsolvable or um, something's not working. And then the next day or a moment later, you can have an entirely different framework. There can be something that uh, just surfaces within you that shifts everything. And you're looking at the same stuff, but you feel entirely different about it. If you haven't had that experience yet, create more space in your daily life, create more time for meditation, and that experience will come. And once you begin to have that experience more and more frequently, you tend to believe your thoughts and your experiences less and you know that they're actually malleable. Um, I wanted to start today's conversation with a post that um, one of our UBC folks put online, Krista, and she put it online um, for the new year and it's uh, a little image. We're going to post it for you, but it's this little image and it says this, one little character to the other. Why so optimistic about 2019? What do you think it'll bring? Everything seems so messed up. That's what one character says. The other one says, I think it will bring flowers. To which the first replies, yes, how come? And the other one says, because I'm planting flowers. Because I'm planting flowers. So what we plant makes a difference. It's not all rocket science. Sometimes it feels like life is happening to us, everything is so messed up, or I set these intentions, I set these goals, I set this word every year, but nothing really changes and it feels like life is happening to us. But the truth is that so much of perception and perspective is what we bring to it, it's what we plant. So if we plant moments, if we plant pause, if we plant space, if we plant mindfulness, we will have what we know we have planted. Um, when we look at how we spend our time, one of the things for me is really to take my practice and to take my life and to ask for universal support, God consciousness, whatever you want to call it, wisdom itself, um, mindfulness, but to ask for my activities to be directed. Now, when I pause enough, when I don't pause to get into that space where I'm asking, my time can be sucked into a million directions and my activity, what to act on, it's just all over the place. But when I pause enough to ask for that support, that universal support, which I believe is unending and everywhere present, and I really believe that it's part of a mystical experience to activate that support and to remember to even ask. But when I do that, I find that I am directed on what to take action on. Um, that in this sea of how I could use my time, in the sea of how I could respond to everything, it is more fruitful when I pause and I ask. If there is nothing sifting out what we do, then we become very automatic beings. We really tend to waste so much time. And even when we're on purpose, think about the time that we waste. Think about the time spent um, spinning around thoughts in our heads. The time spent attempting to do something when we're either not in the mood for it or things aren't lining up for it, but just you know plowing away at something that's not working over and over, expecting different results, expecting it to just happen, but we just spend the time doing it and it's really not moving anywhere. Um, the time we spent just wasting, uh, like, you know, watching something mindfulness, mind, uh, non-mindfully, like watching, you know, a television show or um, a film, just, just filling space, filling time. And the odd part about that is 
that for so many of us, you could catch us on camera saying that um, we are what Elizabeth Grace Saunders calls time poor, that uh, we tell ourselves we need more time. There's not enough time to do those things. Oh, there's all these things that I, I want to do, but I don't have time to do them. I can't fit them in. I would argue that it's not as much that we can't fit them in as we're not in the mood for them or we're not inspired to follow through with them or we are telling ourselves a story about why we are either not worthy or can't complete these things or don't have all of the resources in line or it's not time yet, you know, we're not ready yet, we're not good enough yet, whatever it is, you fill in your story. But there's something about that story that either we believe that we are somehow not equipped yet or that we're time poor, as she says. And we know that both of those things are really just limitation stories that we tell ourselves. Because the truth is, if an idea comes to you, if you are here in this community, on this planet, in this time and space, and there is something in your heart to do, there is no thing that needs to limit you or stop you. And you are already endowed with everything needed to move forward into that creation, into that activity. That doesn't mean that you have everything already in the moment showing itself to you to complete it, to be at the end of the journey. I think that's where a lot of people get stuck. They don't start because it's like, I can't see myself as the person who's completed this task or creation or whatever it is. But you always have what you need to get started. And everything along the way will show itself when it's time. And as far as having the time to complete the things that we long to complete, in an instant, time can be rearranged. We've all had the experience of something happening in our lives where all of a sudden our priorities shift and we have all the time we need to do whatever it is that we now need to focus on, which before we may have said we didn't have the time for it. So the idea of being time poor is really an illusion. Uh, the truth is, what is our priority? And then when we get those concepts in line, then we really look at the idea of following up and following through with the things that we're inspired to do. And I know for me, a lot of the time when I feel like I'm not expressing or generating consciously, it's because I'm not connected to my inspiration for that thing at that moment. And that inspiration completely comes from the spiritual practice of meditation and mindfulness and allowing ourselves the space to flow in and out of what is ours to do, allowing ourselves the space to be directed, to get inspired, and to move into things when we are inspired. So do you allow yourself to get up in the middle of the night? If you woke up in the middle of the night and you had a dream or you had some inspiration and you wanted to take notes on that because you felt like you were you know, just moving with an idea, do you actually get up? Or do you say, mm, it's three o'clock in the morning, I need to get to work tomorrow or I have this or I have that to do so I can't pay attention to that right now, go away. Do you decide to cancel your day if all of a sudden you've started on a painting or a book or whatever it is and you're just on fire with it? Do you allow yourself the space to go with that and to let other things step aside so you can move with that inspiration? Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we get it to the place where we're so rigid with our schedules and our humanity that we forget to make time for the mystical. We get forget to make time to be inspired. We forget to just sit by a lake and allow ourselves to just feel the water, allow ourselves to feel grounded, allow ourselves to feel centered and just see what comes from that. I can tell you from the process of songwriting that I've experienced, from the process of uh, writing talks and conversations, 
that if I, for me, if I don't move with that inspiration when I have it, it drifts off. It's like waking up and realizing you had a dream that was an incredible dream, but not picking up the phone to tell someone or picking up your journal to jot it down. And later on in the day, you, you kind of go, oh, I, I know I had a dream, I know it was significant, but oh, I just don't, I don't remember what it was. But if you pause and you write it down, if you pick up the phone and you have a conversation, if you say to someone, hey, meet me for coffee, I just had this dream and I really wanna unpack it, you will find that there is something there in the inspiration. But it's ours to eavesdrop on those conversations that happen with us, eavesdrop on what is inspiring us and to move with that flow. Charles Fillmore uh, talks about the idea of grace and he talks about the idea of grace as being the unearned good, like the good that this universe is just giving to us constantly, the good that um, all godness is all around us all the time. And he really refers to it as being that positive energy that meets us kind of halfway or more than halfway that in fact, all we need to do is step into things a little bit and then there is this whole chorus of supportive energy in the universe that just gets the ball rolling for us and keeps it moving and starts giving, starts feeding and fueling us. So can we make more time for space, especially in this new year? Our affirmation for the month of January is grace is an upward pull of the universe, lifting me to the heights of divine nature. Grace is an upward pull of the universe, lifting me to the heights of divine nature. Are we ready to be lifted to the heights of our divine nature, to be lifted into that which is purposeful, that is meaningful, and take off all the boundaries and all of the ideas and limitations on what we think that may or may not be. This is not of um, our culture. This is not of our community. This is not of our uh, system. This is of the spirit. So it's not the things that uh, you know your employer might think is valuable. It's not things that your mind and your human self might think of as accomplishments. It could be as beautiful and simple as spending time with someone. Uh, really saying, if this moment were my last moment on the planet, would I be happy I'm spending it like this? That thought comes to me a lot when I'm doing things. I think to myself, if this were my last day on the planet, week, month, year, would I be happy that I spent this much time in this way? And if I weren't, if I wouldn't be happy with that, then I try to redirect that energy a bit. I wanna share with you this article and we'll post this article as well by Elizabeth Grace Saunders. Um, she says that there are five, uh, five things to do in order to redesign your life, to get time back. So if you think of yourself as time poor, if you want to just power up your intention this year and um, create more of what you want, she says, try these five things. And they're pretty simple, but powerful. It's about our choices and making different choices on how we allocate our time. She says, do these five things. Quit something. Look at how you spend your time. Feel how you feel when you spend your time doing the different things that you do. And allow yourself to quit something. Now really think about that. What is it that you would like to quit? Feel free to post your answers. And not even just what would you like to, but what are you going to? What are you able to? And maybe it's even something that you don't think you're able to quit that. You don't think you're able to, but you know what? If something happened and rearranged your life, you would quit it. Think about what that might be, quit something. The next is limit something. What is it that if you were to limit it, limit your use of it, limit your experience of it, limit your time with it, it would actually transform your life or it would actually create space? What would you limit? The next is pause. 
pause, to really let yourself have time where you step away. And in the article, she goes into things like, you know, if you work through your lunch all the time, maybe take that time and, and stop. Just take, an, take a complete break. Have your lunch somewhere that's beautiful. Have it somewhere that it, you can have some mindfulness. It may be putting a pause in your morning, in your evening, whatever it is. But create space. Stop, slow down, take a break. And the next is delegate something. Delegate something. And then her last step is to add something. Think about what you would add to your life this year that if you truly made the time for it and you truly added it on, it would change your experience. It would help you be a little more on purpose. It would help you feel a little bit more fulfilled or loved or whatever it is that would bring more grace into your experience. I invite you to take a deep breath in this morning and we're gonna have a time of meditation together just to allow this experience of this morning to seep in and to soak in. And I'm gonna give you some Kansas City snow to breathe into the beauty of the trees for this meditation time. So just breathing into this moment. And just allowing yourself to listen. Sweet spirit of ever present light of wisdom itself. Be in me the knowing and the understanding to be who I'm here to be, to do what I came here to do and to make moments matter. I have been in the space and place in life where someone made moments matter with me. And I know how much a moment can mean. Help me from moment to moment redesign my life to follow that which would bring in grace, to act on that which would benefit not only my own life, but benefit all beings and all life itself. Create in me the space to be mindful. As I breathe into this moment, I open up mind, body, and spirit to the truth that I can slow down, and when I slow down, I listen. And when I listen, I am inspired, and when I am inspired, I am on purpose. And when I am on purpose, I co-create light on this planet and a world that works for all and overflowing goodness and gratitude in my own life and in the lives of those I love. We allow each sound to bring us more deeply into the silence. We acknowledge the power of this collective silence together.
and so it is. So thank you for being with us live streaming this morning from Kansas City, from this snowy, snowy area here. If you are here, this is the point where you get to leave if you'd like to skip the announcements. <laughs> Is anyone going to stay here with me? I'm going to go ahead and let you know our announcements. So if you are usually in-house this Sunday or a live streamer um, that catches in that wants to hear our announcements, I want to give you some of those announcements from this Sunday. But thank you for joining us live stream. And I want to say, too, that um, in this moment when we uh, close the, the sanctuary, which does not happen very often, but um, our community, especially our um, supporters that are uh, committed givers to this spiritual community and our members, uh, they know that when our sanctuary closes, when our doors close on Sunday morning, that um, that's about a quarter of our income for the month for our operating budget that goes kind of out the window. Um, and uh, the expenses for the most part stay exactly the same. So it can be a funny thing, but we always want to make sure that everybody is safe. And thanks to our live streamers that contribute, which is amazing. Um, when we live stream, that giving is consistent. Thank you to the people who sign up for recurring giving. Um, that holds the community together. Um, and thank you to those of you who are online right now who choose to support Unity Village Chapel, knowing that um, our doors are closed this Sunday, so you're offering really, really makes a difference this Sunday. And if you um, give this morning, there should be a little graphic that you can post that says, I gave. And so you can pick one of those fun graphics and do that as you um, give your offering. Those can be mailed in to our mailing address. Um, and you can find that at unityvillagechapel.org. Um, or you can do text to give, which will post the number of the text to give. Um, or you can do that online as well at unityvillagechapel.org. So thank you to all of those folks, especially those of you who know um, how the, the system works behind the scenes. Because in Unity, we know that we give to where we're spiritually fed. So I, we will do an offering um, at the end of the announcements. Um, and you might start yours now if you'd like to do that. Uh, but I just want to let you know a few things. And, and remember, I'm not great at giving announcements. That's a good affirmation. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, spirit groups are starting. So if you have not signed up for a spirit group yet, there are still some available. Spirit groups are our, uh, small groups that get together. They meet and they have a topic or a purpose. We do one large one in the fall together based on a book. Um, but these are little community groups um, of generally 12 or under people and they meet for about 10 weeks and dive into a topic and connect with each other. So our winter series begins next week and there's uh, there are some spots still available. It's getting pretty full, but there are spots still available. So if you um, don't have a group yet and you would like to get uh, in touch with them, just um, go to the UVC website and find out more. Next Sunday, be with us in-house and live stream. We have Greg Bowens here. Um, Greg is the author of I Choose Happiness. And he's going to be here with us in Kansas City, so we're really um, glad to have him. The Sisters of Myrtle Fillmore Retreat is coming up, so if you have not yet gotten your tickets, go ahead and get that. It's a full day of um, amazing time with women. It's an empowering time. It's a time of community. You don't have to be part of Unity Village Chapel to come to this retreat, but it's something that you don't want to miss. And um, all of the funds that come from this event go back into serving, so... Um, check out those links on Eventbrite and Facebook to find out how you can be a part of that retreat that comes up on Saturday, January 26th. Um, the year end giving statements to all of you who support Unity Village Chapel, who support this um, community talk series every single Sunday, um, to all of you who, is, who have given throughout the year, we have your contribution statements ready. And so, um, you will get them via email. If we have your email address on file, if you need to update that, please do that. If you do not have email or we don't have an email for you, they will be available to be picked up in the sanctuary after the services in January um, at the end of the month. 
and um, you can also call the office if you would just like to request a paper copy because you would like to have one mailed to you. And at the end of January, any that haven't been picked up will be mailed out. But if we do have your email address, we're saving paper and going green, so you'll get it via email. Um, we are open to having a membership class. We have membership classes every time we have at least 10 people that are interested. So if you would like to be a part of the next membership class, when we have 10 people signed up, we will let you know when that's happening. And it's on um, Sundays after the service um, from 1 to 4, I believe. And we also have a board election coming up in March. So we are looking for folks that are spiritually grounded, that are members of this community to apply for the board of trustees. So if that is something that might be a possibility for you, pray about that, think about that, um, find out about what we do as a board. And you can find out more information if you go to univillagechapel.org and go to the board page under about us and you'll find information on how to apply. So, um, with that, thank you for being here on this sacred Sunday morning. If you would take a moment to hold your tithes and offerings in your hand, and those of you that are on recurring giving, that are on auto giving, and they are generally live streamers, and any of you who might normally just not think of giving, um, it's something that before I was a minister and before I was involved in unity to this uh, degree, I had no idea how it makes a difference. And my spiritual practice is to give to where I see spiritual nourishment shared and what I want to grow on this planet. And I am clear that I want to grow a movement like unity. I want to grow a movement that teaches people they're born blessed. I want to grow a movement that teaches people to check into their divine wisdom. I want to grow a movement that gives people messages that they're worthy, that they're whole, that they're complete, that they have within them everything to live a mindful, balanced, centered life and to help others live that life. So if you want to join me and join all of the others in this committed giving to creating this spiritual community and creating spiritual nourishment on this planet, please take your tithes and your love offerings in your hand as we bless them in this moment. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. We take a moment now to connect with each other knowing that as we give, we give together. And when we give together, it flows abundantly. And so we just thank everyone else who is giving with us in this moment. And we literally say the words, thank you. Thank you for giving with me because if it were just me giving, it wouldn't be the whole picture, it wouldn't be enough. But because we joined together in valuing the same thing. There is so much abundance. And we together create this experience. We have created this. So we say to everyone who is giving right now, thank you for creating unity together. And so it is. Amen. Happy Sunday. By the power of this practice, may all beings have peace and the causes of peace. May all beings know themselves as emanations of the one light and the one power, known by many names and needing no name at all. Namaste. Over and out, buddies. <laughs>